uh, you are locked in this room with me. Uh, I will not let you leave, so you have to listen to this. So, welcome to HTML and CSS News for January 2020. Um, we have 11 meetups a year. So last year, our, we ended early November. So we have like two months backlog of uh, uh, updates. So much so that Firefox has updated itself twice. We also never, never have meetup. So anyway, uh, 71 happened and then 72 also happened yesterday. So we shall just go through all of it. So CSS shadow parts are enabled in Firefox 72. What is CSS shadow parts? Uh, so there is a shadow DOM, which is like an official uh, W3C specification. Virtual DOM is not an official uh, W3C uh, specification. That's a React thing, but you know, shadow DOM. Similar uh, kind of uh, concepts like web components and shit. So there is a part pseudo element. So basically, if you never heard of the CSS shadow parts specification before, uh, go and read the spec. Uh, I always advocate for people to read the spec because I know it seems like the CSS specification is very scary, but it's actually not. Recently, the the text is, has been uh, sort of like edited to be more human friendly and readable. So I always very encourage people to like read the specification. So the part pseudo element, uh, it kind of well, according to the spec, it allows shadow hosts to selectively expose chosen elements from the shadow tree to the outside page for styling purposes. It's not very Englishy, but I think they are trying their best. So, like you know, if you got time, go and read it. CSS motion path has also been shipped. So CSS motion path is very fun because when you use CSS animations, it used to be like a bit uh, limited, not as like fun as green sock where you can like define your like interesting shapes. But we now we have this uh, relatively. Uh, newer spec, what they're trying to do is allow us to animate along a path. So there are properties like the of the offset properties and um, offset path is significant because that's the one that lets you define a specific path that you want your animation to go. So this is kind of fun and you can play with it. Firefox 72 my friends. And uh, if you have 72, that means you also have all the features in 71. So what happened in 71? Subgrid is now supported. If you don't know what subgrid is, um, Subgrid is CSS grid level up. So uh, basically what it allows you is it allows your nested grid to participate in the parent grid uh, sizing. So if none of this makes any sense to you, that just means that you have never uh, used CSS grid in your life. So you should try using CSS grid. And then when you find a use case where you, your nested grid needs to follow the size of your parent grid, you can use subgrid. Uh, there's also what's interesting. Oh, there's an aspect ratio property, um, but this is kind of Firefoxy, so let's skip this. Uh, Chrome DevTools 80, yeah, nothing related to uh, HTML and CSS. Uh, their UI has a responsive design, <laughs> moving on. And I don't know how many of you use Safari Technology Preview, but uh, they're actually quite, they're actually not bad. Eh? They are like, it's kind of, it's like WebKit, right? Uh, so their Technology Preview or like TP edition is, uh, it's actually quite cutting edge. I know people like to shit on Safari, um, but that's because the, the main version of Safari has to be tied to the OS. But they are, you, they are, doing, they are doing like the Chrome Canary style, like interesting things in the technology preview. So you, you can download it. Uh, fun fact, the, the, the logo, right? Purple color, so it's like, eh, hey, nicer than blue. Anyway, so there, uh, there's support for the Q unit. I thought it was fun to mention Q unit because I think nobody knows what is a Q unit. Q unit uh, is a, quarter millimeters. Uh, one Q equals one fortieth of one CM. I don't know why anybody would want to use one Q, but it's specified in the spec, so somebody clearly wants to use it. Uh, that's a fun fact. Another thing I'd like to mention is this uh, CSS clamp function. I know this because I was there when the discussion happened to like, they were like, hey, wait, how, how should we word this? But basically, the, the clamp function, what it does is uh, it clamps a value between the upper and lower bound. So it's like one of the mathematical functions. So if you want to look uh, into more detail about what this does, the module, the CSS specification to look for is CSS values and units. That's the one with all the mathematical functions, all the funny units things. Very interesting. So in spec land, um, whoa, someone is calling my phone. Uh, I will... You answer. Thanks. Uh, anyway, continue. Uh, okay, spatial navigation. This is very new. This is very new. Basically, what it does is, so this part, right, it's not me telling you uh, what the, the property does. I want to tell you that these CSS specs exist so that if you, like, one day 
got nothing better to do your life or you're like, oh, tonight cannot sleep, I need to read something. I'm going to read this. This is good for you. I just, I just want to tell you that these facts exist. So spatial navigation actually relatively new. I think the working draft got released maybe like last year. So it's for, focus, it's for like keyboard focus. So it says here, navigating focus using arrow keys. So I think this is uh, to address accessibility accessibility issues especially for people who use a lot of keyboard navigation so it's called the spatial navigation spec very new level one is only working graph so there'll probably be a lot of changes um so keep up for it containment module level one if you have been here with us like semi-regularly i mentioned containment uh a lot over the years and it's now a W3C recommendation so contain right there's this property called the contain property it's actually uh, its purpose is for optimizations because it will indicate which elements subtree independent rest of the page, which means that you can tell the browser, I only want this part to change. It's an optimization thing. Uh, so it's now a W3C recommendation, so like quite widely supported. I think it's uh, worth exploring a bit more. Text level, level 3 working draft also updated so the text module controls typesetting so things like uh line line breaking line wrapping hyphenation alignment all that cover inside this spec so what they are trying to do is trying to give authors more fine control of how to uh, type so i think if you are more interested in typography and stuff this will be of, of relevance to you uh, okay my favorite well, okay not, not my favorite but like Quite high on the list, yes, I have a ranking of specifications. Color, color level 4, working draft updated. Um, so basically, what's significant is that LAP and LCH are finally getting implemented in browser. So this particular specification is uh, uh, interesting to me, personally, uh, because I actually uh, met the guy who, who worked a lot on it, worked, wrote a lot of it. So he's been trying to get this LAP and LCH implemented in browsers. It's been in the spec for a long time, just browser don't want to implement yeah. But I think uh, recently they are starting to actually get it implemented. So what is lab? Lab is uh, hmm, if you're not a designer, maybe this is a bit foreign to you, but like digital di digital color has some like it's like a color space. Right? So lab is a is is a sort of physical color space that uh how should we put this? So a physical measurement of color that exists in this thing called a lab color space. So lab is like, is a co I keep doing this because it's a, like a coordinate system. Uh, and there's a central lightness axis, which is usually written as this unitless number. Okay, it's, 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 a, lot, it's a bit technical and jargony, but if you're interested in like, you know, color, color how oh. digital color shows up on your screen, uh, this is something uh, to look at. LCH actually has the same L axis as lab. Um, but it has a chrome and hue uh, axis, that's why it's LCH. Okay, too much technical detail. Uh, go and read the spec if you are interested. Lastly is a basic user interface module. So in case you didn't know, there are a lot of default native uh, UIs that come with browsers that we cannot style. Um, and that's defined inside this user interface module. I think there is a push towards allowing, opening, opening this up for web developers like you and I to kind of style things like maybe scroll bars and things like that. So what the user interface module covers is things like uh, like outline, I think, hey, wait, is it outline? Uh, the carrot color, uh, I think resize, things like that. So it's now level four, so it's, it's very working draft. I don't think a lot of things inside there are, are implemented in browsers. Uh, I'm quite sure you can change the carrot color now, but yeah, something interesting to play around with. So always download the nightly version of your favorite uh, browser of choice and, and just mess around with the new features. Okay, uh, this will, lots of links because two months worth of backlog. Uh, I want to mention this, uh, this particular code pen because, because, because it's done by local, uh, local, lo local friend. Uh, his name is uh, Dave Kwa, He's, he works at GovTech. He may or may not speak at next month's uh, talk CSS, but as you all know, uh, there was a solar eclipse in Singapore, a very big thing, and uh, this fine gentleman recreated it in just CSS. See uh, here, both, no JS, uh, no JS, legit man. So, uh, this is a highlight, highlight worthy. Uh, I will send all this out uh, in the newsletter. So, now I would like to invite our first speaker, uh, Ryan. 
who is a Okay, uh, sit down, sit down, never mind. OT, OT, on time, on target. What is time, right? What is time? <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, please, please come up, sir, uh, first speaker.